Welcome to the Dustin Daniels Show, a radio program dedicated to bridging the gap between pornography and the church pew, a radio broadcast devoted to exposing the lie that's in pornography, and instead proclaiming God's purity, the purity that is only found in Jesus Christ. I am your host, a redeemed sex addict and pastor to those who want help with their lust. Lust is, after all, this big white elephant sitting in our homes. We have to kind of walk around to her or him to get to the television. Depending on the size of the elephant, it it may block the actual computer room or your office. And see, this topic of lust and porn is scarcely talked about from the pulpit because it's it's too scary. We we really do have an epidemic on our hands. And all we want to do is start the conversation. We want to start the conversation and let you know that there are 50 to 60% of Christian men who who don't just have a a random encounter with pornography. We have 50 to 60% of men who are addicted to porn. We have 20 to 30% of our Christian sisters who are addicted to porn. So this show is certainly not a rated R show. It's in, it's intended to encourage you as parents, as church leaders, as single people to start this conversation. Because if we don't start the conversation, then that's where this sin gets its power. So we want to not only start the conversation, especially with your with your children and with your church, we want, we want this to be an ongoing conversation. So if you are struggling with lust, or if you're hiding your, your porn use, then I want you to know, number one, I love you, and there's a group of people who love you, and I would encourage you to find those people and to reach out. You do have to do that, and it's very, very simple. Simply go to sevenplaces.org. Spell out the number seven, S-E-V-E-N, sevenplaces.org. And what you're going to do there is you're going to find an online community. It's completely free, completely anonymous, and you can get signed up. And there are seven places, pastors and uh, professional counselors there. And not only that, but just the group of men that are willing to pour their lives into yours. This is not like Facebook to where it's all about me, myself, and I, which is, you know, the unholy trinity. This is about you and how these men can pour their lives into you and tell you their stories and then for you to become comfortable enough for you to tell them theirs, uh, yours as well. For women, we uh, our partner ministry with the uh, online community, Dirty Girls Ministries. If you're a woman struggling in this area, there's a link to uh, that ministry as well. Video blogs there. There's an audio player there. You can listen to my testimony. There are community groups there. Basically, all of that to say there's a lot of information and that you are not alone. So today on the show, we've got part two uh, with Vicki Titi. Vicki, welcome back to the Dustin Daniels Show. Hey, thanks. Dustin. You have written the book. It's called When Your Husband is Addicted to Pornography, and the subtitle is Healing Your Wounded Heart. And um, I'm so glad that you're back with us. We, we want to kind of finish our discussion about what this book does for women and the hope that you have given to those that are on the other side of, of the devastation. If you would tell us once again a little bit about your background and, and why you wrote this book uh, for spouses. Certainly, I am a wife and mother and author and speaker, and in the course of my speaking, I really I would share my story of my first marriage that was devastated by pornography, and I would hear from so many women that they were walking this path as well. And the interesting thing is, often they would tell me my husband is doing all the right things, but I'm still struggling. I'm not okay. It's hard for me to let him touch me or, or for me to really trust him, and I realized that women didn't have a resource that was helping them find healing at the foot of the cross. And so that's why I wrote this book, so that women could could find healing for their own heart, regardless of their husband's everyday choices. com is the website, V-I-C-K-I. 
T-I-E-D-E dot com. They can learn about your ministry, your blogs, and if they want to pick up the book, they can pick it up there, but they can also go to Amazon.com. And once, a bit, once again, the book is called When Your Husband is Addicted to Pornography. Um, so, Vicki, one of the things that, that I wanted to kind of start off with is uh, the way that you wrote the book is is great because it, it it starts off in sections. So you've got pretty much, you know, week one through week six, and then you break it into day one, day two, day three. And I kind of found myself as I was reading your book, wow, you know, this is great because it's not like overwhelming information. It takes me, you know, 15, 20 minutes to kind of work through it, but it's not just a book. It's a workbook as well. And I found myself engaged from the very, very start. Could you say more about why you did that? Absolutely. I really wanted women to have an opportunity to apply what they were reading and to think about how it fits in their circumstance and and so that they could really move forward in their own story because no two stories are exactly alike, though our grieving processes are similar. And so I felt it was really important. And I find that unless I'm asked to write something down and really think through it, I can really breeze past some information that is valuable to me. So just slowing down the process um, is important in absorbing all the information. Yeah, and that's that. I really felt that, and that was that was really really neat thinking. That look, okay, I've been devastated by what my husband has done. My children have been devastated. His work or my finances. I mean, it just goes on and on. This this web is tremendous. And now, wait a second, you're giving me homework, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And some of women have said, you know, I don't. I don't need counseling. Uh, this is his problem. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't need to work on this. And yet, down the road, they discover that there are still issues in the marriage, and it's no longer his issue. It's theirs. And so, you know, while the pornography might be his deal, the intimacy and the type of emotional relationship that you can have with your husband really is about both of you. And so you need to do your part of that, too. You know, one of the, the things that we talk about a lot on this program is is what is adultery? And one of the things that you say in your book is that as, as soon as sexual pleasure is sought outside the marriage, whether it's uh, with a different partner, self-gratification, whether it's looking at porn, that is adultery. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't agree more. Could you say from your perspective why you wrote that? You know, One of the things I needed to hear myself, and I didn't hear this, was that it really is wrong because we live in a culture that's promoting this behavior, that's saying boys will be boys. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you need to just buck up, honey. And, And I needed to hear that God's Word said something different than that. And so really examining the Scripture and understanding that He has a plan for this covenant that that you form with your husband, and that's that that sexual intimacy and pleasure would only be sought in your marriage relationship and in the marriage bed. And so anything outside of that constitutes adultery. And that was important for me. I believe it's important for other women to hear, too. And you know what? There are a lot of pastors and counselors who are not giving that counsel. And so there are women who have been misinformed and told that this is their problem, that maybe they should loosen up or lighten up or not make such an, a big deal about this. And I needed them to hear what, what God's Word has to say about it. Nobody cares what Vicki Titi's Word has to say, <laughs> but they need to know what God's Word says about this. So how many women do you speak to in your conferences, Vicki, to where they say, well, you know, it's, you know, it's only porn. It's, it's really not that big of a deal. Yes, I'm hurt. But, you know, I, I think we're going to get through it. We really don't need counseling. We really don't need groups. We really don't need this stuff. And, you know, your book's great. I'm not sure if I'll read it. But, you know, I think we can do this alone. Right. You know, what's interesting is I've only had one person say that to my face. Other people may feel safe putting that <laughs> right. on Facebook or yeah. online. But um, yeah. they can't say that to your face. And the reason is is because you can see their eyes. And once you see their eyes and they see your eyes and you know that there's a reflection there that reflects the deep pain that you've experienced and the level of hurt that, you know, you can say whatever you want when it's just print on a page or on a, on a computer screen. But when you see each other's face, and so very few women that I speak to will say that to me mm. because they know the level of pain 
they know they see what's in my eyes. I talk even in the book about women and how we can almost look back at pictures and we can say this was before the porn and this is after the porn. And you can see it in their eyes. And I've had a number of women say that is absolutely true, that it, it changed them physically. Well, so, and, and, and you, you, you talk about in your book to where you, you cry, you tell your story, and you literally cry until you're physically sick. Yeah. You know what? I've, thank, thankfully, I've had healing at the foot of the cross, and I'm not to that place anymore. But there was a time when night after night, and, you know, I would get up at 2 o'clock in the morning, and he would be on the computer, and I would be alone again and feeling rejected. The level of intimacy that we had was not what I expected in the early years of my marriage. And um, I felt so rejected. And, you know, interestingly, I've had I've had men explain that, you know, they don't feel worthy to ha- be intimate with their wife because you know, of their behavior and what they've seen and what they've done. And so while he feels that shame, she feels rejected. And I would experience that rejection and and just be heartbroken. And I would. I would curl up in the fetal position. I would cry until I vomited. It it was uh, excruciating. So where where did your, your strength come from? Where where did you go? Where, where were you, your thought life, your prayer life? Where were you? in those darkest moments. Yeah, you know what? I I literally cried out to the Lord. And um, interestingly, I was just reading last night about the Israelites crying out to God when they were in captivity in Egypt. And it said, you know, God heard their groanings. And and then it said, and God knew, period. And God <laughs> knew. He does know, and, absolutely. Oh, that just, that just struck me to the core as I read it even again last night. Just that reminder that... He knew, and when I couldn't pray, and when I didn't have words, and so many women who are in the throes of this say, I I can't open my Bible, it's just words, it doesn't mean anything, and that's why having a book like this that takes them to the words that will help provide that healing will get them to the point where they they realize that that becomes their balm, that's what's um, healing and comforting and provides you know, your only peace and hope. And women need to know that God is able to reach down and pluck them out of this pit and that they don't have to be pulled down uh, any further by their husband's choices. And that's why I say women have to fix their eyes on the Lord and not on their husband, because their husband can't make them feel better right now. Right. But God can. And and he's in the business of healing broken hearts. My guest is Vicki Titi, author of the new book, When Your Husband is Addicted to Pornography. Uh, subtitle there, Healing Your Wounded Heart. You can pick this up at Amazon.com. Vicki, when, when you talk about a woman's attempts to try to control her husband, how, <laughs> how hard is that on being on your side of things? Yeah, it, you know, that's one of those things where women will tell me the things they're doing, and I relay the things that I attempted to do, and I can, you know, honestly say, and how's that going for you? Because <laughs> I suspect not well. You know, I mean, in the end, we are only responsible for our own behaviors and choices, and we cannot make our husband do anything. And yet, I think as women, we first feel the pain when we discover our husband's addiction, and then we try to figure out how we're going to fix it. And so we can find the websites, we can find the programs he needs to use, he, we can find the filtering software. We can provide all of those things for him, but we cannot, you know, make him stop looking at pornography. And so, you know, that attempt to control someone else is um, not very fulfilling. (laughs) You know, it's just, you can't do it. How hard is it for you not to want to press and and kind of nag when you were, when you were with your first husband and you're going through this, this whole situation? Did you feel the Lord kind of tugging on you going, ah, oh, be careful, watch your tone of voice, don't don't press yeah. there. Can you can you share a little bit about that experience with us? Um, you know what? I'll be honest, I didn't do it well. I didn't do it well at all. And um there were many days that I was a nag and I was asking him questions all the time and I I you know, it Bless his heart. I mean, he didn't have a moment's peace. (laughs) I went so far as to hide the keyboard in the trunk of the car and, and, you know, put the keys where no one could find them Mm -hmm. other than myself if it was a good day. 
on bad days, I couldn't remember where I'd hit the keys. So, you know, I just, it, it's just not, it's so counterproductive to try to control. Um, what's better is to be able to express your needs and to say, this is what I need. This is what I need to see. And, and to allow him the opportunity to do it. And then you wait because you cannot make that happen for him. And, and trying to, you know, trying to make it happen is not going to be productive. Only God, I mean, only the Holy Spirit is going to do that convicting, and he doesn't really need our assistance. Is, is that out of fear, Vicki, to, to want to nag and, and press in and make sure that, that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing and, and held accountable? Is, is that out of fear, or is that, I mean, the trust is obviously broken. But, yeah. but what is it that you're afraid of if it is fear? No, I, I do I do think fear factors into it. I think um there is that fear that he's not gonna stop or that there's gonna be a reoccurrence or that he's gonna abandon you or that he will never find you attractive again because that's how you feel. You you're quite certain that this is because of your insufficiency that he has a need to go to something else. That's you know, from talking to countless men, that's not the story. That's not the case. They always say that, or often say, this has nothing to do with my wife. And yet that is not the message that your wife is going to be receiving. And so that's really hard. I will tell you that the more evidence he sees or she sees of him doing something, the less likely she is going to be to nag. So as I think about this, if a man were to make a list of everything he has done, every behavior he has done to try to keep the addiction a secret, whether that's erasing the history or uh, working in a room with a door on it, having the computer screen turned to where no one can see it, I mean, multiple things. If he just could make it, be honest and make a list of every behavior he's done and then intentionally reverse all of those things, and do just the opposite for his wife. Have the computer in the living room where everybody can see the screen. Give her all of the passwords. Never erase the history. You know, all of those opposite behaviors. When she sees those things happening, then those build trust. And and that's, that's um, you just can't put a price tag on that. You know, and and you mentioned something there, Vicki, that, that one of the first things when I meet the spouses of the guys that I pastor is... This is not your fault. And, and you, you, I look into the, the, the woman's eyes and, and she's crying and she's devastated. And there's nothing that she did to provoke this or, or could have to prevent this. And there are some deep-seated issues that all of us as men or, or if we're you know, involved with lust or an, a full-blown addict that we have to kind of dig deep. This is just an acting out behavior. Can you speak to the wives that are listening now and just from your perspective, having gone through this and just give them some hope that this really isn't your fault. Yeah. That, you know, that is a recurring theme in my book too, because I think most of the women do believe it's their fault that it's because they're inadequate or they're too heavy or they're too thin or they're not attractive enough. And so it's so important for her to know that, in the end, we're all responsible for ourselves and how we walk in obedience to God's Word. She can't control her husband's choices. This has nothing to do with her. When he tells her that, she needs to believe him, that this isn't about her. And and again, then, fixing her eyes on the Lord and not trying to compete with digitally enhanced women on a computer screen, because you will never be able to do this. And And in the end, your heart is what matters. And so... Um, you know, just finding that assurance in the Lord and praying for your husband, that that is truly, it sounds like such a cliche, but it is the most important thing you can do because the Holy Spirit will do his job. I've never known him not to. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and, you know, so if you trust the Holy Spirit with your husband's heart, then, you know, and trust him with your heart too. Trust him that as the wife in this situation, he can heal your heart. And he can heal the self-injurious thoughts you've had about about your worth and your value that you have felt betrayed and rejected and not desirable. And God finds you all of those things. He has chosen you. And he is going to pursue you until the day he takes you home. 
And so that is what you have to put your your heart into and your focus on. And and believe me that that there's nothing more attractive than that. And so when you uh, grow in your relationship with the Lord and in that healing and your husband is doing the same thing, then at some point you're going to be growing towards each other too. And and then there can be restoration in your marriage. Talk about the difference between trust and forgiveness. In your book, you say they're not the same thing. And we have this conversation all the time. So trusting and forgiving, what are the differences there, Vicki? Yeah, you know what? I tell women that they probably will. I think even forgiveness takes time. In fact, I don't encourage women to forgive fast. I don't think that that's usually real forgiveness. I think it's cheap forgiveness. I think in order to really offer the kind of forgiveness that allows us to no longer dwell on it, to no longer bring it up against our husband, to no longer need to talk to others about it, and to not let it stand between us or hurt your relationship, in order to have that kind of forgiveness, you got to do the messy work of healing and, and dealing with your identity, dealing with your brokenness. And, and you will probably get to the point of forgiveness before you will fully trust your husband, and that's okay. And and I need men, men need to hear that as well, because they think that when their wife has forgiven them, they should never, ever have any issue with this. It should never come up again. And not that you, I, I don't want women to use pornography as a stick that they beat their husband with. Right. And so I, that's why I want them to do the hard work of forgiveness. But trust takes time. And his behaviors are going to become the barometer for that trust. And if he demonstrates behaviors that are trustworthy and he makes good choices, then, you know, then trust will be restored over time. But if he's doing things that are not trustworthy, if he's being secretive, if he doesn't want to give up a password or resist accountability, then I tell a woman she should be cautious about fully trusting. Um, Absolutely. And I I love that that phrase that you use there, that trust is your barometer. Um, This has nothing to do with salvation. If we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, we're saved. But as far as doing the hard work that you're talking about to for your spouse to regain trust in you, then I have to do some really hard things and a lot of things that I don't want to do. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, and don't we do that with our children, too? I mean, you don't just give them the car keys the first time they get their license and you send them out and go, do what you want. Right. You know, that you have to earn that trust. You have to demonstrate responsibility. And you know what? He has a responsibility for her heart. That when, when they make that covenant commitment before the Lord and before the crowd of people at their, on their wedding day, he is being entrusted with her heart. And when that has been betrayed, there is a need for him to have a new level of accountability. And, you know, he's not doing that because he's being punished. He should want to do that to demonstrate his love and respect for his wife. Vicki Titi is my guest, author of the book, When Your Husband is Addicted to Pornography, Healing Your Wounded Heart. It is a must read for every spouse that has been affected by pornography. Vicki, thank you so much for being my guest. It was a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much. Let's do it again. You can pick up her book on Amazon.com. We are a prayer and listener supported broadcast. How can you help? Well, visit sevenplaces.org. You can also email us your questions there. Find a free online community. There's video blogs there. There's audio players there. If you like what you hear, you can um, download everything on iTunes. There's podcasts if you go to DustinDanielsRadio.com. And remember that the Word of God says that the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. God bless you. Thank you for listening to The Dustin Daniels Show. We're a listener-supported ministry. To make a donation for our resources that were mentioned on today's program, visit sevenplaces.org. That's S-E-V-E-N places.org. The Dustin Daniels Show is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information with regard to the subject matter covered. 
This information is given with the understanding that neither the host nor the station is engaged in rendering professional counseling advice that pertains to your personal situation. If you need further help, we encourage you to seek the services of a Christ-based counseling professional.